right, today will be the last day that we'll actually have a lecture in here for this semester. So beginning next week, you are to be finishing up your copy of the Corba site and then starting to work on your own project. All right, the paper was due today, that little write-up on your requirements. Hopefully you got that done. I will not lie to you, I won't be grading them until Monday because I, like I, I think I told you, I got a wedding this weekend and I got... I get house duty tomorrow, so I'm going to be cleaning. So, <clears throat> uh, by Monday or by next class on Tuesday, too, I'll have the next part of your specs created. I thought I'd have that done now. I don't. So, I want to go over Chapter 12 today. There's not a lot of stuff in here in, in Chapter 12 as far as exercises and the like. More than anything else, what the author talks about, as mentioned right there, is search engine optimization. And search engine optimization, or SEO, in many ways is kind of a prickly topic because there's a lot of disagreement over how, for example, Google does their rankings, all right? And they try to keep it as secret as possible because they don't want to let that out because then everybody would try to use whatever their secrets are to get, you know, to get their stuff on the front page and get themselves a higher ranking. So as mentioned here, there's five different chapter objectives. They talk about how to optimize your articles how to add metadata to your content, even though they've already talked about that a little bit, using search engine friendly URLs, creating internal hyperlinks, and redirecting visitors to updated URLs. And one thing they mention here is, first of all, there's no magic fix. And not only that, if you're trying to, to optimize for different search engines, the way that you might opt optimize for one search engine isn't necessarily, you know, for one company is not necessarily the way you do it for another one. All right. And hopefully this goes without saying, you know, it says the first and foremost SEO rule is to have, you know, make sure that you offer a site with great content. Well, one thing is, you know, to me, especially with the advent of mobile and mobile apps, that's one of the reasons, believe me, I'm glad that we're getting into this stuff is to me, this is a whole new niche market. And there's all sorts of stuff. Again, if, if you don't, you know, I don't know if you've heard of this already, and I actually did a little reading on this because I heard about it, and I, I couldn't believe it. To me, it sounded too bizarre, but it's true. Uh, when when uh, Mac first came out with the iPhone, one of the first iPhones that was out there, like iPhone 4 or whatever it was, one of the first ones, all right, years ago, somebody came up with an app that what happened was you could rub your finger over your, your iPhone, and it was called Steam. And it made it look like you went <sighs> on it. So it made it look like, you know, basic. The guy made $100,000 on that app in the first month. I wouldn't want it if it was free. But evidently there was a market for it. All right, so that's the thing. You know, t so the, what I'm getting to is they talk about make sure you have great content, and that's true. But if you can be the first one out there and you can grab part of a niche market, you're going to help yourself also. As it says, if you don't have a site that's regularly updated with quality content, well, that's the other thing. If the site is very static, if it doesn't change much, if all you've done is you've got a trifold type of thing that you have for your company, and basically you take that and you put it online and you never change it, you know, I don't think that you're going to be up very high in search engine rankings. All right. And some of it is, too, based on the number of, of hits that you get by people. And... <clears throat> When all that stuff is checked analytically, they also check if there's a million hits, there's a big difference between a million different people hitting it and maybe several thousand people hitting it several thousand times. All right, all that stuff is brought in there when they talk about their, their algorithm for uh, you know, where, you, where you're going to fall in the rankings. Okay, I know that Mike is working on a website for his, uh, for his internship for this e-strength and fitness. All right, and just so you see it, <coughs> It's eStrengthAndFitness.com, and the guy has been in here a couple times. You may or may not have seen him, but he's, this is uh, the brainchild of Dr. Joseph Ariola, who is a chiropractor out of Janesville, and his brother. And it's basically what it does is it offers online fitness, all right? And they try to change it up a lot. But, but this, this kind of thing is starting to get more popular. You can type in online fitness and find a lot of them. 
So one of the things that Joe told, Dr. Joe told Mikey one was he said, could you optimize this, all right, for the ser for search engines? And I printed some stuff out. Mike has gone and done some looking on his own. But again, it's a WordPress site, so the way that you're going to optimize things for WordPress isn't necessarily the same way you're going to optimize it for Joomla, all right, which isn't necessarily the same way you're going to optimize it if it's a straight HTML5 CSS3 JavaScript type of site. So, as it says, search engines are probably the main tool that people will use to get to your site. You know, and it's the old idea, you know, you don't know about it, Google it type of an idea, okay? To add the site to their database, search engines use software to scan the web looking for relevant content, all right? They'll analyze the code that's in your site, they'll go through it, they'll spider through your content and figure out, you know, based on meta tags that you have and based on the content that you have, yeah, that you're worth putting up there. But a lot of times when you come up there, if you're a small company and you're trying to fall into a market that's got a lot of companies in it, you're not going to fall on the first page. You might not fall on the second page. People might have to, to, when they're searching for you, might have to put in your company directly in order to be able to find where you are. As they mentioned here on the bottom of 354, all these techniques, techniques rather boil down to increasing visibility. You want to make it as easy as possible for them to go in with their robots and spider through and find what it is they're supposed to find. So some of the stuff they start talking in here, they mention what they consider at least to be some best practices. The first, it says your article title. Make it meaningful. I know, remember years ago, all right, years ago, <coughs> uh, I was taking an English class. I must have been like a junior or a senior in high school. And what, they, what the teacher had us do one day was he had us go in and we, we had to, he gave, we each picked names, all right, or half of us picked names. And whatever name we picked, we had to interview that person. We had to write a, a one-page story about them, and then we had to present it to the class, okay? And um, he didn't tell us really much more than that. And then right when we, we also had to turn it in when we were done. All right, and I remember because my story was about a guy I knew pretty well, Mike Gelhausen, a good guy, and everybody for some reason called him Gilly Pig. And what I should have done is that should have been part of the title of the story. But right at the end, he said, oh, yeah, you got to have a title, too, right before we presented it. So I called mine Mike Gelhausen, the man. He took off big time because he said that was not only a bad title, it was a stupid title. And I mentioned throughout the thing that it was a Gilly Pig. And he said, if you'd have called it something like, what the heck is a Gilly Pig? I would have gotten more points for it, all right? And why? Because that would have possibly, at least, if somebody would have seen that in a paper or in a magazine or whatever, they might have at least glanced at it, wondering what the heck that meant. Well, in the same way here, what they're saying is you want to make your title meaningful. At the same time, you're kind of struck, uh, hand struck or whatever the saying is, because you also don't want it to be too long, all right? If you've got a title that's going to fit up in the tab here, you know, notice where they've got enter a meaningful title. That doesn't even all show. So it's got to be small enough that it'll show in a tab, you know, uh, explicit enough that it'll get somebody's attention type of an idea. But it's the title of the site. I mean, that's what's going to appear in there. But you also, you want people to look, you want it to be something that's, for lack of better words, that's captivating. All right? And they give you some examples in here. Not only should your title of your site be something that makes sense, but the title of articles that are in your site, if you're going to use something like Joomla, should make sense. All right. And one thing that the author has done, I don't even have the, the Corba site up and running right now, but hopefully you've noticed this, is the, the titles, by and large, the titles of the Corba site have been things that have pertained to art, right? And if they've been on art lectures, they've been having something to do with an art lecture. All right, and if it's some topic on bad art, it's been something like hideous still lifes or whatever. It's been something like that. And I, again, I, hopefully that goes without saying, I'm going to expect you to do the same thing. In other words, if Mark does his on the Green Bay Packers, you know, there's probably some really good articles he could, you know, he could grab. He could either create it by himself or he could go and grab them from, that are out there on the web. But some of them probably have really good titles and some of them don't. So he could use his own poetic prose and put good titles in there, but he shouldn't have Packer Article 1, Packer Article 2, Packer Article 3, etc. All right. Use clear formatting. And one of the things that they talk about here are the H1 through H6 tags. And the author mentions here, 
Joomla uses H1 tags for page headings. All right, notice these headings are only displayed if you select this in the options in the menu link. So if you go in there and you basically say, show page headings, yes, and page heading if you, if you tell it to use the, the H1. The problem with that is not every page that you have is probably going to have an H1 heading on it. So the author mentions a little later in here that there actually is an add-on that, that you can grab amongst other add-ons that'll go through this for you and kind of look through your own site to see whether or not you've got H1 headings, what they are, and to let piece be basically to let people know that if you use this, what your headings are going to end up being. All right. So they go through, then they say that the H2 is used for main content, all right, and you work your way down. Some of the stuff that's in here, and you know this, that if you go all the way down to an H6 heading, it's going to be smaller than the actual text is going to be. All right. So is this a really good idea? Do you want to use this, et cetera? That's, that's going to be your call. And also remember that even with the ProStar that we used, for instance, when we used some of these, the H3 heading, I think it was, it automatically made it blue. All right. So again, think about all that stuff when you're starting to use these different headings. You know, how, is it, how does it look? You know, don't just put it in or just don't just use it because it's part of a, uh, of a template that you happen to grab. Remember with those templates that you can always go in there and tinker with the CSS and make stuff change. All right, so optimizing the use of H1, this is what I mentioned. It says if you want more control over the heading tags in your site, there's a great free plugin available called Header Tags. It changes existing heading tags to your specifications. It says after the install, it checks if there's an H1 tag in the output. If there isn't, the first H2 becomes an H1. And they give you the site if you're interested in taking a look at that. You know, I, I'm not going to be so pompous as to expect that if I go through this book over the weekend and I go, yeah, that would be good in your site, that would be good in your site, and with 12 chapters, let's assume, I'm just grabbing this number, that let's say that there's really chapters 1, 2, and 3 was just what's Joomla about, adding Joomla, etc. So about 9 or 10 chapters. Let's say I grab approximately 5 or 6 things per chapter, okay? And I say, you should have these 50 things on your site. I'm not going to have time to check all 50. All right, so are you going to use all 50? But I'm going to be kind of like a, cert, like a search engine. I'm not going to tell you which of those 50 I'm going to look at. And I'll have my own little things in there where for Mike's I might check these 10 things, for Mark's I might check these 10 things. But let, you know, if you've got a, a decent looking site that does most of the stuff that we've done in this book and you've added your own template, you've added your own content as opposed to using lipsum.com, et cetera, you know, you're going to do fine. All right, again, try to regularly add quality content to your site. Search engine spiders visit your site regularly. May or may not be true. A lot of that's going to depend upon the type of site you have. And again, I'm, I'm going to be willing to bet you if a search engine does visit your site frequently and you never change the site, it's not going to visit your site frequently. All right, it's just that's the way that it's going to work. All right, images. Well, you know, things like alt tags. That's to be expected today. We've talked about this kind of thing before. Again, what I'm about to show you right now, this shouldn't be anything at all that's new. So if you come through there and you put in an image tag, so if I say image, source equals my image dot JPEG, all right? At a minimum, you should be adding to that, you know, alt equals picture of my dog or whatever it happens to be. But it's also not a bad idea to put in the width equals 550 and the height equals, you know, 630 or whatever. And again, when you're doing that, you're optimizing it for the browser. I'm not going to be that picky that I go in and if I see your images, first of all, if you have a lot of images, I won't have time to look at every one of them. But I probably will grab at least one or two and make, make sure, you know, you'll have to have, of course, the source tag. But I want to make sure you are putting in things like the alt tag. We've talked about this before. You put that in not only because if, if for some reason this doesn't exist or you've given it a wrong path or whatever, so you've got something there, all right? But also it's got the tool tip that brings it over, and also it's done for accessibility reasons. This shouldn't be new stuff to you. And again, 
Orinda should have talked with you about this stuff when you talked about image tags in the 157 class. We've talked about them a little in some of the other classes. I've been trying to really impress upon the first year people this kind of stuff. If you build a site for accessibility from the get-go and you put in at least the minimum things you should put in, all right, you're better off. And again, you may or may not know about it, but there also is a, a title tag that you can put into not only an image, but just about every kind of tag there is. And you can put more in there than you'd put in an alt tag. And those title tags, again, are oft times used by, for instance, um, browsers for the blind. So you can put a lot bigger thing in there that uh, tends to describe something to somebody. I watched The Voice on, it was either Monday or Tuesday, and they had a guy in there that he's blind. And that's the first time I've seen a, a, a participant on that show that's blind. And he mentioned that when he was born, he had sight. He basically, I think he said that he lost one, the sight in one eye fairly young. And in the other eye, he was playing with a friend. And the friend shot a squirt gun in his eye. And it must have been with a lot of force because it detached his retina. And he ended up losing his vision in that eye also. The point is, that person originally had sight. So if you use something like a title attribute and you describe something, probably they could have, in the, as the saying goes, in their mind's eye, get some kind of an idea of what that image looked like. If you've got someone who's been blind since birth, you might give some kind of a description. That may or may not help them. I don't know. All right. Am I expecting you to have a title? No. But if you're going to create your own site, Kelly had talked about this, for some of the, you know, converting some of the sites that he's working on for other people, maybe the vet's, a vet's site or a site, I think you said, for a family member or whatever, you might want to consider something like that. But again, you want to always consider your audience. If I've got a site that's, that's literally going to be sit there, it's going to be a site that's of all the pictures I've taken during my life. Probably a lot of people who are blind aren't going to want to go to that site. All right, But if it's some kind of an e-commerce site, I might want to put something like this in because you know, I, I don't know if the people going to my site are blind or not blind. To be honest with you, if I'm trying to sell a product, I don't care. I just want them to go to my site and spend money. <clears throat> All right. So as it says, it's not only uh, good SEO practice to add page heading titles, but also to make sure each page has a descriptive page title. We talked about that a little bit. And they have you come in here and do this. And what they do is they have you go into Menu Manager. As it says, click on the Using Joomla link to edit it. And the idea is when you do this, and you take your mouse and you put it over the site, it's going to put up some kind of a title in there. All right, again, some people would say that, that that's actually distracting to see that. And unless you're going to write something, I mean, if, if you sit there and the title up here is Corva, and if you put another title in here, so if they mouse over something, it says Corva, what have you really, you know, what have you really done? You've, you've been kind of a pain in the butt. But up here, if it says Corva, and down here, when you set it up, if it says collectors of really bad art, that might be something that's worthwhile. Again, it's a crapshoot on that, and it's always something that you have to come up with and say whether or not this is worth you doing it or not doing it. All right. Next, they come in and talking, talk about adding the site name to the page title. And they mentioned that if you want to do that, you can go into Site, Global Configurations, Site Settings, and they have you do that. So again, the site title, they, what they're saying is if you want that to be put in here. All right. So when it comes up on the screen. Again, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. But these, this is the kind of thing that as you are a developer, the, the problem, I think, is to me, it's very hard when I develop something, regardless of how simple or how hard it is, for me to be objective about things that I do. All right, I'm noticing already when I'm starting to grade, and I noticed it with some of you also, that when I start to grade uh, the first year's peop people's their stuff, all right, one of the reasons in the 157 class, we went over how to do a page. John and Mike can attest to this. We had a simple site, how to build HTML5. All right, we created a simple site with a, with a few pages on it. But what I tried to impress upon people when they created their own site, don't use this template. Come up with something that's yours. All right, Because otherwise, you're, you're learning to program as I learned to program. And that's not necessarily the right way to learn to program. All right, So why am, why am I even saying that? All right, Well, 
as you're sitting there and you're creating your own stuff, have people look at it that are going to be apt to use it. All right, whether it's a family member or whatever, because they're looking at it with different eyes than your eyes. All right, and they're going to find something that you didn't even think about by and large. All right, you know, I'm partially colorblind, and man, those colors that you used, it's really hard for me to discern between your your background color and your font color because they're so close. Whereas I'm not colorblind and I didn't see that kind of an idea. All right. All right. Metadata we've talked about a little bit in earlier chapters. They mention here it says up till now you focused on the actual content. Remember that metadata is things that you don't see as they mention here unless you do the view page source. It's stuff that's put in there ideally for search engines that they can go through it. And the idea is, it's always been my understanding at least, that when they're going to go through and spider your site, the stuff that you put in there for your description and your keywords, that's going to be put into some kind of a search engine database. And as they go through and look, they're making sure that your pages actually have the content that you put on there. So in other words, that you're not putting in false content up in your meta tags because you're trying to get into a lot of different pages. And then when they go through and spider your actual site, you don't have that content in there. All right? And again, there's more to it than that. All right? So as it says, in Joomla, you can enter metadata on four different levels, site-wide, on for individual menu links, for individual categories, and for individual articles. By default, it says Joomla only has some dummy metadata with a short description and a few Joomla-related content keywords. And we're, again, I'm even doing this with the people in the 157 class. And at least the book that I'm using, we're working on this. I don't think I have it up anymore, but it's the same one that you guys used last year. And this is where I took it from, um, that Joe's Pizza site. But we built the entire thing. So this is what they're working on. It's got a home, a home page. You might remember that from last year. An about page with some video that we're going to be adding into it, a news page. A menu page with pictures embedded in there, and that's a table. A location page, which has got some geolocation, and a bookings page. And what's neat about the bookings page, it's not in there right now, but they even use local storage and session storage so that once you put stuff in here and you come back to it, that, that data persists. So it's a lot of different stuff. But the, the reason I'm telling you that is when we go through here and we view the page source, there is metadata in here. And at least what they've been shown for the description is, it may not be the best description, but it's a description and it pertains to what the site actually is about. And when you come in here, I've mentioned this to them already, that if Joe's is known for their pizza, especially their pepperoni pizza, yeah, you'd put that in there in content along with some of the stuff they've shown there. But let's say that starting next month, Joe introduces boneless wings. You'd want to add something like that in. And you know, even things like for metadata, if you want to put your name in there, all right, that's not going to probably help with search engine optimization, but there are a lot of different meta tags that you can use. So at least they've been exposed to them. A guy asked me the other day, you know, are you expecting a lot of stuff as far as that stuff behind the scenes? No, not now. But the idea was at least you've been exposed to it. So if somebody says, geez, we never talked about that before. No, we talked about it. You just forgot about the fact that we talked about it. So again, they have you go over to site, global configuration, and go into the metadata settings and add some of the stuff that's in there. The description, Corba is an international club of collectors of really bad art, all right? And the keywords, bad art, ugly art, bad paintings, et cetera. And if you remember, because we, we, we worked on this in an earlier chapter, it's kind of interesting. They put down here for the keywords, bad art, ugly art, and bad paintings, because last time they put art and they put paintings. Because remember, although they're calling themselves collectors of really bad art, I'm sure that to a lot of the people in the club, that's not bad art. All right. So you might want to put other words in there that just have a, a, a bad connotation to them. Okay. Notice that it's not exactly Twitter, but it says here it's a good idea to keep your meta description as concise as possible as Google only uses the first 155 characters. All right, and again, what much of this chapter is, if you haven't already figured it out, is this is the author's views, and the author is giving you some general principles. 
So as he says here, you can override global metadata on those three levels that we talked about, menu level, category level, and article level. It says which of these are based on actual web pages. The principle is that the metadata set on more specific pages overrules the one that's set more generally. All right. In other words, global data is going to be overridden by menu data, which is going to be overridden by article data. All right. And that's what they talk about in here. All right. It says find metadata to fit your site. You can go out, you can find information on Google about just about anything. All right. But to me, if you're going to make a site and it's your individual site, nobody knows what should go into the metadata better than you do. So even though it's not, there's not a problem with going out to some site, some generic site, and being able to type in a keyword, whatever it is, pizza or whatever, and get some information about it, you should still take that with a grain of salt and add your own stuff to it. All right. Next, on 364, they talk about creating search-friendly URLs. And we talked about this a little bit because virtually all of you in the class, other than like Mark who's already taken the class and Amanda's not in the class, but we've looked at some of this stuff when we talked about, about having the more friendly URLs in ASP.NET last week. So the idea is when the URL comes up, and rather than it being generic and may, or maybe having a long query string, you want to be able to have it where somebody could look at that and figure out if it's a product, for example, all right, where that product was and et cetera. I'm starting to work on that right now. I've always, it, it's funny, Mark, Mark, you're not the one who actually gave me the inspiration, but I noticed you wear a hat a lot, as does Kelly. And for years, when he, when he was a player and then when he was a manager, for some reason, I just liked his nickname. We're going to build a, a website in PHP starting in a few weeks. It's going to be called Harry's Hats. You may or may not remember years ago, the, one of the first managers of the Houston Astros back when they were the Colt 45 was Harry the Hat Walker. All right, and we're going to sell hats. And I'm basing it on a, on a website that I, I created with a class a few years ago, and I'm adding stuff I found in another site in another book that I used to use, and I'm putting all this stuff together. And then it hit me yesterday because, uh, I, I believe it or not, I'm in, I'm in the Rockton laundromat yesterday, and I'm, I'm washing all of our uh, the rugs that go in our bathrooms because my daughter's boyfriend is coming over for the first time, and God knows he's going to be looking at that. So I was in there, and I was reading a book, and they said, how to take a site like this and convert it into a model view controller site. I thought, well, that'd be cool. Now, I don't know if I'm going to, by doing that, if I'm going to make it better or if I'm going to make it worse. Well, when we start, we're only going to have a few pages in there. We'll have a home page. We'll have a very simple products page. And we'll have some kind of a card page. All right. At first, I thought of, well, we could just take that Halloween Superstore one that we're doing and convert it to PHP. And I thought, I don't want to do that. You know, maybe we should. I don't know. But I don't want to do that. I want to do something that's new because to me that you know it's kind of cheating for lack of better words to do it that way so we're going to create something new and we may only get part of it done this semester and then i might ask you you know do you want to work on it some more next semester for the design and implementation projects class for example all right and if you're you're not in the php class now but you're going to be in the design and implementation projects class next semester i'll give you all the code all right when we when we start working on it all right so Search engine friendly URLs, it says you don't have to do anything to make this happen. By default, search engine friendly URLs are turned on. In the SEO settings, the search en uh, engine friendly URLs option is set to yes. So it results, as it says, in URLs that are reliable and easier to understand. The idea, again, is you have a minimal, a minimum or no query string in there. All right, so anyone can look at it and kind of figure out where they are without having to ferret their way through a query string. It's, it says here, there is still some room for improvement. All default Joomla URLs share the index.php bit. It says you can get rid of this part by using the URL rewriting option in the SEO section. So they have you do that, all right? And they mentioned that there's a, if you want more, there is a URL that you can go out to to take a look at here. All right, all right I didn't do this. I do know about the HT access file, all right, and that is a file that's in there under, usually under your initialization folder, where you can do, for example, you do typically what's called a mod rewrite, which is a module rewrite, and you can set that up too in different types of packages, PHP being one of them, to set it up for friendly URLs. 
the advantage of doing it in a file like that is you do it once and it's more a set it and forget it type of thing. And there's a kind of a standard way of doing it when you do it there. All right. Adding extra links to site content here on page 365, it says search engines rate your site higher if it's an active part of the World Wide Web community, meaning it's nice for you to create links to other sites and you might even have reciprocal agreements. All right, for instance, if you go out, for example, to something like uh, PGA, pgagolf.com, and there's, there's, I don't know if it's pga.com, but one of those, they may have something in there, they may have a link in there to Titleist, all right, to, you know, for Titleist golf clubs, et cetera, Titleist golf balls, and if you go to Titleist site, they may have a link backwards back to the PGA site. Those are reciprocal kinds of URLs. All right, the more you do that, that's going to do two things. First, as it says, it'll increase, probably it'll at least increase the chance that your search engine ranking could go up. Plus, it's allowing other people to see your site. Because if you link to it from somebody else's site, then if they're on that person's site and they happen to click the link, they can go to your site. And by you doing the same, you could also hopefully increase traffic to someone else's site. You see that a lot, where there's reciprocal types of agreements. So as it says, one way to get the world to notice your site is to notify Google, Bing, and others that they're welcome to index all of your content. All right, all search engines have a service that allows you to submit your site. Another way, as it says, is more what I just told you. All right. Now, again, when you do that, occasionally you'll see this where you'll be on somebody's site and there'll be a, either there'll be some kind of a rogue URL out there and you click it and it'll take you to some site you didn't want to go to. All right, my brother told me this years ago, and, and, and if you'd have to know my brother to really appreciate this, that he, he clicked on one of those rogue URL sites, and it brought him out to some, you know, the smuttiest site he's ever seen in his life. He said, Jeff, to be honest with you, I would have looked, but it was so bad. You know, people doing it with animals and stuff on the front page, and I just got out of it. And he said, for some reason, when I went and tried to clear my cache, this site is still there as a member of my cache. I can't get rid of it. It's like it wrote it to some file someplace. Well, you wouldn't want, you'd want to check and make sure all the time that if you're linking to other sites, you're checking those links regularly. All right, and if other people are linking to your site, you want to make sure you're checking their sites regularly to make sure that indeed it is linking back to your site. All right. Another way, as it says here on 366, to create in, is to create uh, internal hyperlinks in Joomla by adding link lists. Notice Joomla allows modules to allow you to add different hyperlink lists. So yeah, you can add hyperlinks. We've seen a little bit of this. If you remember earlier, we had a thing there where uh, an article where it showed some museum and on the bottom we had hyperlinks. They told you to just basically put, put some, you know, hyperlinks to Google or whatever. And I used BTC and Google and something else. All right. But that's another way that you can put you know, external hyperlinks in there. And you could even create something like this. This is what they have you do. So these popular articles, ideally, in here, what they're talking about is this would have a listing of popular articles on your site. Again, if you've got a very small site that's only got two or three pages, this isn't going to make a lot of sense. But as you know, many sites start small and they get bigger. So you could have popular articles that links to your own sites. You could even have popular articles linking to other sites. So people, you know, you want to know more type of idea. You could do that also. All right. And that's what they talk about here. All right. Redirecting visitors to pages that have been moved here. Well, again, the idea is, and you all know this, I think all of us have gone out to a site before where there's broken links. The worst place to have a broken link is on your home page. Because if somehow it's been changed or somehow it got corrupted from somebody else's page and they click, oh, well, it's either down for maintenance or it doesn't work, and now you've potentially lost business, whatever that business happens to be. So as it says here, Joomla has a component called a redirect manager that works with redirect. Notice, enabled by default, the manager and the plugin keep track of any page not found errors. All right, if that's going to happen, I want to be alerted. So if I'm the administrator I, and, and there's a problem with my site, I want to be alerted. I should be checking it on a regular basis. What's regular? I'm sure there are people that are checking all the links in Amazon every day. That Literally, that's a big part of their job. 
links to internally and external links because they don't want that to me, you know, again, that, that gives your, your site a poor reputation, all right? Especially if it's an internal link, okay? You don't want that. But I would imagine that they're, they're, they're updating stuff all the time on there. And it would be very easy for them, for them to have a broken link, to introduce it. You know, probably 99 times out of 100 or more, it would be unintentional, but it could happen anyway. So it says, let's assume you replace your old site with a brand new one. We'll try to figure out how the redirect manager component works by entering a non-existent old URL and then telling the redirect manager to sh what page it should show instead. And that's what it's doing. It literally is doing a redirect. One of the things we're going to be getting to very quickly, if not today, then on Tuesday in the PHP class is to use what's called the header option, where it's almost like a go-to, but it's the same kind of thing where you're redirecting the user to another page. Here you're doing the same thing but it can be for a variety of different reasons. It can be that the page has got a broken link. It can be that for whatever reason that page is under construction, all right? And you just want to send them to a generic page, you've got two or three pages under construction that you just want to let them know that page is under construction, you know, check back soon. I know for a long time you'd see that they literally would have the little, little graphic of, of some workers, you know, digging something and it would say, you know, uh, under construction and you could go out to a site and you'd see that there was a very generic page a lot of sites had. So again, they walk through and they show you how you can do that and you can tell them that's where they're, they're trying to go, but that's where they're go you're going to send them type of an idea. All right. And then finally, just about finished, the author says here, getting to know more about your site traffic and they mentioned Google Analytics. Virtually every, every uh, type of software has their own analytic package. WordPress has their own analytic package, and I know that Joomla has something. So if I come in here and I do a Joomla analytics, all right, it may or may not, but it may show me even Google Analytics, but I know there's got to be several plugins that will allow, yeah, that's nice. All right, site analytics, Joomla extensions directory. So there's going to be some of you could always start with the generic one, which again is Google Analytics. It's nice, it's free. All right. You can do things with this. You can keep track of visitors. You can keep track somewhat at least of ISPs. You can have reports that are created and sent to an administrator on a daily, monthly, weekly, or whatever kind of basis. But again, there are also built in, not built in, but there are plugins that you can add or Joomla specific analytics also. All right. As it says, more resources and they give you some other stuff. Mike, this is, might even be the one that I printed off for you, I don't remember. But as it says, this is the Google Starter Guide to SEO. That's a great place to look. So if you are going to create, be creating a brand new site, but it's a site that there's already a lot of them out there, it's a place to start. All right. Again, what people don't realize, and I, I, can, I, can sound like, I can say this, and I can sound like I'm getting out of the soapbox, I get it. But what most people do when, when they develop a site is they develop a site like they program. And what I mean is, rather than sitting down and thinking about it first, they go in and start doing. They've got a really great idea, they mock up a couple pages, and they start working on it. The best thing that you can do when you're starting a new site is like the best thing you can do when you're working on a new program is to sit and at least take an afternoon, draw something up on a piece of paper or whatever, think about what it is you're trying to do, and come up with at least a few different ideas. You maybe have heard me say this in other classes before, but I remember, because this is what I heard from, from a person who knew a lot more than I did at AT&T, that the first time we had to come up with, with our design specification, what we were told was to come up with three design specs, and they literally called them the Volkswagen, the Buick, and the Cadillac. The Volkswagen was the most bare bones. We could do it the fastest, and it would be the cheapest. The Cadillac was the most expensive and expansive. It had the most features and functionality in it, but it would be the most expensive. And then we had the Buick, which was right in the middle. And a lot of times, that's what the customer wanted. All right, well, we would really like to have this Cadillac of designs that you have, but we don't have the money for it. We don't have the time that it'll take to build it. So maybe you build the Buick and then you'll add stuff later when you're doing maintenance or whatever. What I'm getting to is so if you have at least a few different ideas 
for your design before you go in. If you start with one and it doesn't work, you can always or, you know, matriculate over to another one. But if you start with an idea and you put, as the saying goes, all your eggs in that basket, and now for some reason that design doesn't work or you don't like it, now you're starting over again from, from step one. Don't get rid of the one that you did, even if you s decide you, d you, want, you don't want to use it, because it'll probably have things you can use. But all I'm saying is think about it and have at least a couple alternative plans. All right. So as it says there, they give you SEO tips for Joomla on the Joomla Blogger site. That's also a pretty good site, joomlablogger.net. All right. Again, with any kind of site that's a blog, a lot of times what you're going to have is you won't have people who use the site, you'll have fanatics. In other words, they think that you can use that site for everything in the world. There is. All right. The Joomla Community Magazine on, S you know, on SEO, browse SEO and metadata, SEF categories, just Google it to start with. All right. So I'm responsible now. We, have, we, we went through this, that keeping your website secure in a different class. We went through that earlier. And Appendix B that's in here is on creating a bilingual site. Now, if any of you want to create a bilingual site, feel free to do so. I didn't even read that appendix. So what I'm going to try to make sure I do by Tuesday is I'm going to, I'm going to start retaping these, and I'm going to go back in and um, dig through each chapter and pick out a few things that I'd like to see you put into your site. So when you come in here on Tuesday of next week, that'll be out there. If I get it done earlier, you can look under the homework section out both on the P drive and out on Blackboard. And if I do put it out there and get it out there on Blackboard, I'll make sure when I do that, I'll have a, I'll have a, a message that'll be emailed to all of you also. All right, so that's all that I had.